everyone, I'm Clement from The Wine Journal. Welcome to today's tasting. Today I am super excited and tasting the 2016 Dornish wine and the 2016 The Imps Delight. Now, if you're a Game of Thrones fan, these names might sound familiar. Just to give you a little story and a little background on these wine, uh, Vignoble Bardet and uh, winemaker Thibault uh, Bardet, huge Game of Thrones fan, and uh, he decided to try and recreate the wine from Game of Thrones. He read, uh, he, he read all the books and went through the whole series and jotted down notes on uh, how the wine was being described. Uh, he took down about 40 pages of notes on the wine. Now, the series, they don't talk about the wine too much. They don't go in depth with it a whole lot. But in the books, apparently, I've never read the books, but in, in the book, they, they talk in greater detail about the wine. So between the two, he got a lot of uh, notes, 40 pages, like I said, and he decided to recreate uh, the Imps Delight and uh, Dornish wine. So super excited and tasting these. Uh, now, these are going to become extremely rare bottles. Uh, the reason that is is because um, you probably heard it on the news if you're a Game of Thrones fan, but um, HBO called him. He got really popular with uh, with making these two wines and basically told him that he can't produce any more of it. Uh, he made, I think, about 15,000 bottles and they said, you can sell the remainder of the, the remaining of the bottles that you have, but you're not allowed to make any more. So that's why I'm super excited to have these two because in the US it's extremely hard to find these, but uh, nevertheless, really excited and tasting them. So that's a little story. Uh, wine from Bordeaux, of course, Saint-Emilion, uh, Vignoble Bardet. So let's go ahead and try the Dornish wine, which I just poured myself a little glass over here. Uh, this is gonna be a Côte de Bordeaux. So let's go ahead and um, give it a nice swirl. What's cool about these bottles as well is that they have that wax um, covering, which is really cool. Uh, but and they're shorter. Not sure if you can tell in the video, but they're shorter and a little bit fatter bottles. And uh, the labels are absolutely stunning and um, really feels like I'm in Game of Thrones. No. All right. Let's go ahead and give this a little swirl. Um, on the color, the color looks nice. Darker color. 14% alcohol, both wines. So let's go ahead and uh, see what it's got on the nose. So on the nose of the Dornish wine, I'm getting some, it's very subtle, def definitely some fresh uh, red fruits, but very subtle, a little ag um, aggressive, not a whole lot, just uh, very nice, seems very nice and elegant. Let's go ahead and see what it's got on the palate. Mm. It's very good. It's had some tannins a little bit. Um, it's nice. Red fruit, a lot of minerals I'm getting. Some, a little bit of plum in there. Some um, leather a little bit. It's really nice. It's uh, It doesn't have a long finish. It's fairly short, but it's well packaged, well, um, well made wine. Let me go ahead and take another another sip here. Acidity is starting to come out a little bit more. It's a really nice wine. It's really elegant. It's not too strong. It's a very well balanced. Definitely got a little bit of, um, like I said, minerals and and leatherness with some plum. Um, a little bit of, uh, you know, some um, red fruits, light red fruits a little bit. So really, really nice wine. Now let's go ahead and try the Imps Delight. See how this is. Now this is from Saint Emilion. The first one was Côte de Bordeaux. So let's go ahead and, and see what's got on the color. On the color, I would say like a little bit more darker, concentrated cherry color. Uh, again, 14% on the alcohol as well. So let's go ahead and see what it's got on the nose. I 
I'm getting a little bit more of a developed wine, a little bit more well-structured wine. Um, getting a, that wetness a little bit, still getting some leather as well on it. The fruits uh, are not coming out as much. Let's go ahead and see what it's got on the uh, on the palate. Very tannic, lots of tannin sores at the back of the palate, and this really tastes tastes like an old world wine. Um, it's um, a lot of still getting some minerals as well, a lot more wetness, a lot more rocks in it, uh, not very fruit forward. Um, you can definitely tell that this is a very different and unique wine. Um, it's just. Um, a little bit older, even though it's 2016, it's already showing some age. Um, it's um, getting maybe a little bit of um, some cherries in there, a little bit, um, but it's really nice. This really resembles um, kind of the old world, old world wine, uh, but this is really good. So this is gonna be really the Imps Delight, um, as close as to we're ever gonna get in tasting a uh, very similar wine um, or a similar wine than what was uh, drank in Game of Thrones and the, and the story behind it. So really two great wines to have. Um, I love Game of Thrones. If you're a fan of Game of Thrones, I'd recommend you trying these wines, um, especially with a finale coming up. Um, not sure who's going to make it, uh, knowing that everybody gets killed, but... Um, Anyways, we're going to be enjoying that with a finale. And again, uh, cheers to Thibaut um, Baudet for making these, uh, these wine because it is truly exceptional what he has done. And uh, for him to make these wine is just um, uh, kind of um, a wish come true for a lot of Game of Thrones fans. So thanks again for watching. Uh, let's see what happens in the finale. And uh, again, Thibaut Baudet, thank you for, uh, for, this awesome, uh, for these two awesome wines. And until next tasting, cheers.